everybody, this is Connie with Connie's Crafty Corner. Um, <clears throat> I meant to have more videos put up last week, and I did film a couple of videos that I didn't post because I updated my, well, I didn't update, my, my computer updated, it's a Mac, and a lot of times when I film my videos, I stop them and then have to start them back, and a lot of times y'all barely notice it because it's just real quick, you know, because usually I have to go get something or if I start coughing or if I get a phone call or something, that's what I'll do. But I don't know how to put them together unless I put them in my iMovie that's on my computer. And I could not get my clips to load into iMovie. And I just gave up. And then I thought, well, I'll try again later. And I went back and I had deleted my clips, my videos that I'd made. So... I have no idea what I talked to y'all about last week in those videos that y'all are never going to see. So, I thought I'd come on here and talk to you a little bit about what's been going on with me. Okay. I, um, last, let's see, last week, I think it was last week, yes. Last week, I filmed that yarn tour, my sewing room, craft room, I filmed all that. And, um, I had talked to you guys about going through my mother's paperwork, my mom's. And if, if it's, this is someone, y'all, I can't get my words out today. If this is someone's first time seeing these videos, my mom does have, uh, does have Alzheimer's and I've taken care of her finances and all her stuff for years. I'm, it's like fourth or fifth year that I've been doing that. So needless to say, any insurance or, or, you know, paying for any bills or anything I've taken care of. Well, my mom has a certain kind of insurance. I, I think it, I, when you're on Medicare, you have to get these supplemental policies that help pay for your medicines and stuff like that. But anyway, she had one kind that she's had for years. Well, we didn't know that another insurance company had called my mom and talked to her and had her switch her insurance companies. So we kept getting all these bills of denial of payment and all this stuff. And with my personality, I just threw them in a little box and just ignored it because I thought, well, I'll just deal with this later, you know. Well, three months, four months go by and I thought, well, I better deal with it. And in the meantime, we had found out that she had had her insurance switched and all this other stuff, they were attempting to build her old insurance. So I had to stay on the phone with Medicare and doctor's offices and everything all day. I think that was last Tuesday or Wednesday. I can't remember exactly the date, but we got most of it fixed. So hopefully there'll be no more hiccups. Um, we have lost her, her new insurance card and I'm waiting on a new one to come in. So, but anyway, I got all that taken care of last week. I did go to the doctor last Friday. I'm still waiting on some paperwork, I mean not paperwork, blood work to make sure everything's good. I hadn't heard anything, so I went Friday, and this is Tuesday afternoon, so hopefully no news is good news. But they did find that I may have a possible hernia. I've had some abdominal surgeries, and sometimes that'll happen. Um, I've been having a pain next to my belly button on, you know, that might happen three times a year, and this has been going on for years. And as women, I don't know how about you, but I just ignore stuff. If it's not going to continue to hurt, I forget about it. But I did mention it to her in my appointment because it's not happened lately, but I knew that it's happening. And she was such an amazing doctor that seriously let me sit there and talk to her for about an hour. So I get to go have a CT scan to have that checked, and hopefully that's going to be okay. And I don't know if that'll mean a surgery because I don't have trouble with it all the time, but every once in a while, but it does inhibit any kind of exercise as far as using my core because it'll aggravate it. And, you know, I, I can say that's the reason I don't exercise, but it's not. I can do other exercises, but I, you know, if I need to get it fixed, I need to get it fixed, but time will tell about that. But, um, and also, we're still just waiting to see. She's going to make me go to the gynecologist. She's going to make me get a mammogram and all that stuff that I've put off. I think I had a mammogram like three years ago. I don't know if I need one, but she said I had to have one. So, but, and oh, and they did diagnose me with ADD. So, they're going to start me on some medicine. But there's a shortage in our area of that medication. So, I'm just waiting to see what happens with that. So, 
But anyway, at least I know that I'm not, you know, totally off base, that I thought I had ADD, but she confirmed it completely with the things I was telling her. So, but anyway, that's not the whole purpose of me having this video. I wanted to show you guys um, a few quilts that I've made in the past. You know, I told you I've gave every quilt away and there's only one quilt. No, that's a lie. Hold on. Let's see. One, maybe just one besides the Halloween one I've made that I still have. Let me think. Yeah, that's it. That's the only one I've got. Uh, and I found one that, uh, I found it when I was going through some stuff. You know me, I'm all the time pulling out, cleaning, organizing, and making a big mess and not getting anything done. But uh, let me show you. There's three of them. One that I didn't make, but it's my most dearest, most precious quilt that I hopefully will never, ever lose or get rid of it. I know I'll never get rid of it, but anyway, this, the first one I'm going to show you is one that I made for my mother-in-law. Now, this is many, many years ago. She's been passed probably 10 years now, and I got it after she died. I was able to get it and take it back home with me, but um, my husband and I were so poor back in the day. I mean, we didn't have a whole lot of money to spend at Christmas, but I did have an embroidery machine that I had gotten years before, uh, and I did know how to sew. Uh, but we just didn't have money for gifts that year to give anybody. But I had, my aunt, in fact, had given me some of this uh, uh, fabric that I've got, and I think I may have had to buy some of it, but I don't know. But I put very little money into this, but she loved it so much. Um, and it was just this little quilt that I threw together. And it's it's really stained and all that. And I've tried to clean it, but I can't get it clean. But her favorite color, let me just see if I can get you a quick pic, really quick look at it. It's just a little sunbonnet Sue's done in red work. It's just like a little lap size. Uh, but her favorite color was red. And I thought, you know, I'll just make her a red and white quilt. Um, and she kept this thing displayed hanging on her door to her bedroom up until she died. So, um, I was glad to get it back. And I look at it and I think, oh, I did pretty good on this thing. <laughs> I even quilted it on my little, uh, little bitty sewing machine I had at that time. I can't believe it held together all these years. But I've got this one that I made. And I've got this one that my daughter, when she was in kindergarten, they needed a mat for them to um, sleep on. And I made her a little blanket. You know, those little mats that they sleep on, or I think they used to be red and blue. I don't know what they sleep on now to take their naps. Uh, but I made her a little blanket to fit over that. And I remember I made this thing in just like a day or two. It's just little squares that I cut and put all together. I was so proud of this because it's something I made for her, but she used this during her nap time. And I asked her if she remembered it. I was on a phone call with her earlier today, and she did. But look, I was going to show you, I didn't even bind it. I just turned it wrong side out and sewed it. I was in such a hurry. God, that's a good idea. I need to do that on more quilts, but I don't think it holds up as well. I guess y'all don't want to see me halfway in the frame. Let me get myself fixed. I'm sorry. Um, but the most dearest and most special quilt that I'll ever have is from my Aunt Linda. Now, she was my crafting inspiration growing up. She's the one that got me into loving cross-stitch and sewing and quilting. And now, I never saw her crochet. I don't think I ever saw her crochet or knit, but I know she did. I know she knit because I got a pair of knit socks. That's a lie. She did knit. And I well, I bet she crocheted because I, I know, she, I, I think she did, but I can't remember. I need to ask my uncle that. But she and I bought this these books, and I, I it's over there. Let me get it. Hold just a second. Well, you guys, I cannot find the book, but it was a book of classic uh, quilt patterns. I don't know where in the world it is. I'm looking around. I've got stuff stuck. I've looked. I don't know where it's at. But anyway, it was a book, and she and I both had it. In fact, I may have bought hers for her as a gift. But um, there was a quilt in there that I just loved, and I wanted to make so bad, but I never did. And one year for Christmas, she gave me this, and she kind of gave it to me in secret so people wouldn't know that she'd made me something a little extra. Um, and I love this quilt. 
it's got cherries all over it. And I just love it. I thought that was so thoughtful of her. And it's so funny because some of this fabric I had given her, I gave her that heart fabric. And I don't think, I don't remember any of this other, but she made this for me because she knew I wanted it. And this was such a sweet thing. This was a labor of love because I don't think in her life she made but a couple more quilts, even if that much, because her health started failing. But I'll cherish this thing forever. And I do display this thing and I do look at it and enjoy it because it reminds me of my aunt. But I wanted to share that with you. But um, also I wanna tell you something else. I'm the kind of person that I love to give. I love to give to people. I love to share things with people that I think may bring them joy, uh, that makes them happy. And I have been doing a major purge of my craft and sewing and all that stuff. In fact, when we moved in here, I got rid of a lot of stuff that I had not touched physically in years. Now, does sometimes I regret doing that? Yes, I do. But if it's bringing someone else joy, that that's wonderful. But I also had this tub of stuff that my aunt, it was some projects that she'd worked on. Now, I remember spending summers with my aunt and my cousin Donna and us sitting and cross stitching. And I remember going to the store and picking out the stuff to do the little cross stitch projects. And I've got a pillow put up somewhere that I made that summer. I think I made two and my aunt would sew them up for us. Um, but I have this thing, this, this right here, just full of Aunt Linda's cross stitch stuff. And it is a reminder to me that if now, everybody's not going to share this opinion with me, and um, some people may think it's, you know, terrible what you what I do, but um, I, I look at this. First of all, I can see that I got my um, love of starting projects and never finished them from my aunt, because you would not believe the half-finished, I mean, like, the cross-stitch, you know, there's just so many of them that's just, you know, halfway done. Um, this right here, you know, I'm wondering if that wasn't something that I did because I couldn't remember starting a pillow like this because she had one that she had made and give to my grandmother just like this. Um, I've got these old patterns of hers, you know, I can remember looking through all her patterns, just these little fruit, all these little cross stitch patterns. Um, but what I'm trying to tell you is, is that I see all these things that were not finished and all of these supplies that built up, like, okay, this for instance, this is a little thing that she had and it's like a little cross stitch set or embroidery. It may even, no, it's kind of cross stitch. And I opened this up and I thought, you know, I may just do this because I've been kind of wanting to cross stitch lately. And I thought I may do this but she had stuck a needle in the fabric and has rusted and just completely ruined the thing. And plus it's just, the fabric is, you know, not the best shape, but I'll show you where she'd worked on. This may not be the one where she actually stuck her needle. Look how resourceful she was. She had her little guide for colors stuck on the back of a checkbook that she had threaded through. And look at this, oh my goodness. This just brings such joy to me. But she had started this project and just never finished it. I've never seen a counted cross stitch that had the coloring in the background. But what what I, and look, bags and bags and bags of this floss. I mean, there's so many bags I can't hold it all. But what I'm trying to say is that, you know, if, we all have abundance, we all do. And I, I fall into the category of what if I could use it? What if I might use it? And I have had that happen this this year. When I first moved in here, I had a ton of quilting cotton. I had not quilted in years and years and years. And I was under so much stress moving in here that I just gave all that away. And I'm so mad at myself for doing that. That's the biggest thing I regret giving away. In fact, that's really the only thing I regret giving away 
is all of that quilt and cotton because I've got a renewed spark, you know, joy of wanting to quilt and I'm wanting to make some project bags and I'm wanting to do so much with fabric now that I could have used all that and so much of it was from my aunt and so much of it was from me and, you know, buying over the years. But, you know, somebody's going to find joy in that uh, fabric and they do make it every day. It's just going to take me time to slowly build up a little bit of a stash. I don't want to go as bad as I used to be. But, you know, I can't give to everybody and, and you know, I can't give everything I got away. But the things I have given away in the past year or so have brought me joy. Because I hope it spread joy to somebody else. Uh, because I've just got things sitting around that I'm never going to use. Now, my niece Savannah is a big crafter. And my daughter-in-law wants to be a crafter. Um, but I'm going to have my niece, the next time she's here, I'm going to let her just pick out whatever she wants and let her have it. Because I'd rather spread the joy instead of letting it just sit here and collect dust. Y'all saw all the stuff I've got in that last video. Um, I just look around and I see all the stuff. But I don't want to be that. And I will be because I, there's no way I'm not ever going to have my stash. I'm not ever going to have, you know, my yarn and my fabric. But I'm going to try to go through and try to let go of things I know that I'm just never going to use. So my children don't have to go through all this and try to figure out what to do with it and all that. I've already told my uh, daughter that I would love to have my either my daughter-in-law or my Savannah to have all my craft and stuff because she's just not interested in it. And of course, if she wants any of it, she's got first choice. But anyway, I know that's just a random thought. I, I was just thinking of you know, all the unfinished projects I've got, I guess I got all that from my aunt because, and I, it shocks me that she, I mean, you wouldn't believe all the unfinished projects that I did run across when I inherited all of her stuff. Um, because I always felt like she was somebody that started something and finished it. In fact, she did one of those, I don't know the name of it, but I know it was that English paper piece. And, and she literally hand cut out and traced every single hexagon and hand applicated it, a applicated, and hand pieced that entire quilt when she was pregnant with my, her son Jeff, my youngest cousin. Um, I I just can't. I I would don't think I would ever have the uh, patience to do that. But she did that. But then I see all these unfinished projects. It makes me feel a little bit better about myself. <laughs> but anyway. Um, I just thought I'd share a little story time with you guys, and I hope everybody's having an amazing day. I'm going to film another video either today or tomorrow and show you what I've been working on. Um, but anyway, in the meantime, you guys have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.